Hello, and welcome to Octane 21. Thank you for joining our session today, How Car Global is Scaling Customer Identities Across 17 Brands. My name is John Kern, and I'm a Senior Customer Success Manager with Okta, and I've worked with the Car Global team for the last year and a half on their Okta journey. And I'm really excited to share with everyone what Car has been able to accomplish on their common customer experience. Okta has many great brands and industry leaders across its customer base. And I must say, I am very fortunate as a CSM that I am able to work with the Car Global team. Their work and innovation with Okta is very impressive, as you will see today. We're going to take you back to the beginning and discuss how the idea of a common customer experience came up. And then we'll talk a little bit as well about how Okta helped Car along the way and discuss some of the evolutions that took place which ultimately allowed CAR to have a single customer experience across many different brands. I am joined here today with Gary Fields. Gary is the VP of IT of International Markets and is currently working with the Edessa Global brand as they continue to expand solutions into UK and broader European markets. Gary, why don't you take a few minutes and tell us about CAR Global? Sure, John. The easy answer is that we're an auto auction company, but really we're a lot more than that. Through our brands, we provide a number of technology-driven services to both buyers and sellers in the wholesale used car market. We often refer to ourselves as a technology company that sells cars. There's a lot that happens to a used car between one owner and the next. We offer several selling channels, and the earlier we can get the car sold, the better. But our services cover more than just selling it, including inspections, repair, transportation, finance, just to name a few. Prior to COVID, the bulk of our transactions throughout U.S. and Canada occurred in person auctions, but COVID changed all that. Today, all of our auctions take place through one of our online venues. Can you take a minute and tell us how you got involved with Okta, Gary? Glad to. Over my career, I've had the opportunity to, to lead a wide variety of teams. Back in 2013, I was asked to take over our identity management team. Pretty quickly, we found out a huge problem with the user IDs were not being turned off when people left the company. I started working with our HR team to find a way to connect our active directories to our ADP system. You'd think that would have been pretty straightforward, but it wasn't for a number of reasons. Once we got that problem fixed, we moved on to look at the broader need to coordinate employee attributes between these two systems. As we began making progress, somewhere near the end of 2015, CAR started looking at a new HR system. We ultimately chose Workday, and we felt it was time to get serious about finding a single sign-on partner. We chose Okta, and we started our first implementation in mid-2016 using Okta to connect to our employee uh, HR system in Workday. So having so many brands would suggest you have a wide variety of customers. What kind of issues have you run into by operating under so many different brands? Well, that's been a question that's been looking for an answer as long as I've been in IT. How do we identify a unique customer? As a company, we're always working in our various CRM systems to, to deduplicate our customers, but we felt we needed to make progress in our identity stores. So the idea of a single common customer identity store began to get some traction. Well, unfortunately, Gary, we just can't snap our fingers and make this happen. Nope. For a number of years, we decided to allow our brands to maintain their autonomy, and there wasn't a mandate for a single common customer initiative. Then how did we even get this process started? Well, over 10 years ago, we tried to home grow a customer identity store using LDAP, but we still allowed each brand to be in full control of their part of the tree with no incentive to share customers. As we acquired companies that came with their own identity stores and the LDAP approach just wasn't always adopted by them. Sometime in early 2017, our enterprise architecture team proposed a solution to replace the LDAP using Okta. We'll call this our common customer version one. It was somewhat adopted by two or three of our brands, but we quickly began to realize a few problems that just weren't going to fix themselves. Can you share with us what some of those problems that you were facing and what were some of the issues that you found? Sure, some of those were because we still didn't market all of our brands as being part of Car Global. So when one brand registered a customer, the second brand to try to register that same customer didn't know how to welcome them. I started calling this the welcome to, welcome back problem. Some of our problems were Okta-specific constraints that we ran into. 
Uh, we have a very small central identity management team, and they try to manage our solution by using only the Okta group admin capabilities. But what the various app dev teams kept asking for was application admin. And that simply wasn't granular enough to prevent one team from possibly stepping on the work from another team. As more and more teams considered joining our, joining, our identity management team was getting overwhelmed with requests for changes to the applications. During this same time, we were also expanding internationally and we were being faced with challenges related to privacy. And our common customer V1 was hosted in the US so bringing international customers into that version was a non-starter. So what was your approach to creating a solution while, while facing these issues? So let me address these in reverse order. To address the customer privacy GDPR regulations, our new international team created yet another common customer solution for our international customers. And we asked Okta to host this one in Ireland. Our first international app was being developed by our Adesso Global brand for them in the UK. So all of our new customers were being registered there. Um, Odessa Global, by the way, is the part of car that I work for now. Since there was only one brand using this identity store, we didn't have any issues yet with multiple brands tripping over each other. This new Okta org became the foundation for what we will call common customer V2. This grew for about a year without a need for a second brand to join in. But when the second brand needed to register their customers also, we went looking for a way to address the Okta constraints that I mentioned earlier. The solution we came up with, with Okta's help, used the Okta org to org feature to federate selected customers into yet another Okta org. Can you elaborate a little bit more on how Okta helped in this process? Sure, in the past, we had tried to use the Okta org to org pattern by ourselves, but we just weren't getting it right and the identity management team gave up. After a time, we still felt like org to org could help us solve our common customer problem, but we couldn't get the single sign on to work the way we needed it to. We went to Okta for help. They got us in contact with an engineer who helped us find the right syntax for our single sign on URL. After that, the pieces really started to fall into place. So what was the end result of the engagement with Okta? Here's a high level diagram of our architecture. The primary org, the one in the middle here, is used to manage the customer identities and identity attributes. Those would be login, first name, last name, password. We refer to this org as the common customer org, or we call it CC org. The second org is used to manage applications like tokens and issuers and authorizers. As this org is a line of business centric, we call them business orgs or Borgs for short. So Gary, what you're describing here is really what we call a hub and spoke environment, correct? Yes. When we first started the project, we actually used that phrase hub and spoke, but some of our project teams found that confusing as we tried to explain which one was the hub and which one was the spoke. So we chose to just go with CC org and Borg. It really cleared up a lot for us. We have several Borgs in our solution. We start with one Borg per line of business, but we envision that someday we may have a need to have more than one Borg per line of business. We've characterized this as separating identity from access management. So this is kind of the meat of what we've done. Each customer will have only one identity in the CC org. The CC org manages the user profile data, password, and any legacy custom attributes. It's 100% managed by our central identity management team. Each Borg is managed by the DevOps process of a particular line of business app dev team. That team then defines the applications and authorizers, policies and rules that they need for their apps. The CC org identities are provisioned into a Borg without a password. So the apps are not allowed to bypass the CC org to log in their customers. Once the customer has been authenticated by our CC org, they are directed to the single sign-in endpoint that's been set up for a particular Borg for a particular app. Well, Gary, you mentioned earlier a process you called Welcome To, Welcome Back. Can you elaborate on how this process impacted the customer experience? The problem is pretty simple, really. The first brand to register a customer gets to welcome that customer to their brand. That customer receives the Welcome To email telling them how to finish setting up their new identity, set their password, etc. 
But when a second brand tries to register that same customer and they are found that they already exist, what are they supposed to say? They don't want to send the welcome to email, the customer already exists. But if they send a welcome back email from the second brand, that only confuses the customer because in their mind, they've never been here before. So what approach did you take to solve this? Well, what we needed was a way to represent all the customer identities as part of the parent brand car global, while still allowing the various brands to maintain their look and feel. We didn't have that yet, so we began implementing this CC org Borg solution before we had that 100% figured out. As brands discussed joining Common Customer, we found that they wanted to be able to update customer profiles with their brand-specific attributes. Typically, these were user IDs from the brand's legacy identity store, but each brand wanted to make sure that their data couldn't be accidentally changed by another. And we found that the Okta Group admin role still wasn't granular enough to prevent this. Also, we didn't want each line of business to have the power to deactivate a customer because now that these customers are common customers, we didn't want line of business A to turn off a customer that line of business B might still be using. We also found that our common customer architecture still didn't solve issues related to customer registration. We wanted to make sure that certain user attributes that were needed by the common customer system were always set when a new customer got registered. So we came up with a set of APIs that we call the guardrails. Guardrails? That sounds like an interesting concept. What exactly do the guardrails do in the car world and exactly how do they work? Well, it was a working title that just stuck. I started calling them the guardrails because they were supposed to keep our common customer solution from driving itself off into a ditch. First of all, they are the central point for registering a customer. They check to see if a customer already exists or if this is the first time that we've seen them. And then they send out the appropriate welcome to or welcome back message. The next thing they do is assign the customer to the appropriate board. Each line of business has a unique guardrail token that is associated with, a, with specific group IDs in common customer. These groups are used to assign customers to a board and optionally, optionally to enable multi-factor for that customer. Another one of the main functions is to keep track of which line of business originally registered that customer and to guarantee that the user type and a master identity have been set. Uh, we use them as the mechanism for lines of business to update the profile information and to control which customer attributes each line of business is allowed to update. Finally, they also provide a single approach for changing or recovering a customer password. So potentially we could have a customer in multiple boards? Yes. In fact, we hope that's the case because that means that several of our brands are actually sharing the same customer. Ultimately, that is the goal of our common customer system. So based on that info, if the customer's information needs to be updated, how do you inform the various lines of business that that information has been changed? So earlier I mentioned that we set a master identity in common customer when we register the customer. That master ID is part of the customer's master profile, which is federated to each board. The master identity will never change for that customer. We encourage each line of business to stop using the customer login as a matching attribute and instead, they should use this master identity to track their customer. Is this master identity only used inside Okta? No. In fact, we use it as a unifying attribute between Okta and our business systems. For example, inside Odessa Global, we exchange this attribute with Salesforce to connect the customer's Salesforce profile with their Okta identity. That allows us to keep a very minimal set of attributes in Okta and everything else we know about that customer is in Salesforce. And what about your transactional systems? Are you storing any customer data there? Well, that will vary from system to system. For Odessa Global, we know the master identity and can use that to look up their first, last, and email from Okta, or to look up more details in Salesforce if needed. So for the most part, the specific customer data has been abstracted out of our transactional system. So bringing this full circle, Gary, how did you solve the problem of a single car global brand? It's kind of solving itself. CAR began to more intentionally focus on the CAR Global brand. So we were able to start incorporating both the CAR Global brand alongside the line of business brand in our solution. We felt that this co-branded login page will help as new lines of business continue to migrate to this solution. Also, several of our US brands 
uh, we're working to make a better experience for our customers who need to transition from one product to another and back. So this further drove the need for a common customer login that would enable single sign-on between our products. Gary, you mentioned that this was originally started in 2017. I'm curious, once you got to the latest generation of the solution, how quickly was this adopted by the car global brands? Adessa Global went live with this CCOR Borg solution in October 2019. But we didn't have the guardrails built yet. Bringing in the second line of business was held at arm's length until we had those. They were developed during December 2019 and were deployed for testing in early 2020. We were making pretty good progress working with a couple of the lines of business when COVID sent us all home. That kind of paused our progress and then the need to combine our customer experiences became a very high priority. CAR converted itself to 100% online during the first part of COVID, and I believe this also accelerated the need to combine our customers. The first team to go live with the guardrails was our Trade Rev brand. They went live in July 2020 and registered over 20,000 customers before the end of the year. Other brands are in different places in their journey, but Trade Rev's success with common customer has certainly gotten everyone's attention. So what does the future look like for your common customer system? Well, first and foremost, to continue to add more lines of business. The last time I checked, our identity management team is working with nine other lines of business on getting started with common customer. We've developed a self-service portal to allow customers to change or recover their password. We envision expanding this portal to allow customers to change their names or logins, which we use their email address, as well as an easier place to change their password. I could even see this as being a portal as a place where the customer can opt in for multi-factor and maybe even a common place to register access for our apps. So if we go back to the diagram, I see you have Workday integrated into this as well. How does this all work with your employee base? We actually started our journey with Okta in 2016 with our employees. We've been using the Workday as Master integration between Okta and Workday from day one. Um, as one of our main objectives, we chose Okta and Workday to be able to guarantee that a user's access was turned off when they left the company. As for common customer, we've received requests to let a lot of our employees get access to the applications that are hosted in our boards. Uh, we, but we still need to maintain the requirement that this access was also turned off when they leave. So we implemented another org to org connection between the employee Okta and common customer. That way, when an employee ID ends up in a board, it's connected all the way back up the chain to Workday. Oh, that's fantastic, Gary. So what are some of the lessons that you've learned on this journey? In our case, the technical solution, as complicated as it may seem, was easier to implement than solving the branding concerns which makes a ton of sense, and I'm not trying to make it sound like it should have been easy to solve. In fact, to be clear, we don't have it 100% solved yet, but I think we're on the right path now. Okta really leaned into this for us too. We used a lot of Okta orgs. John reviews this with us each month to make sure we keep this solution under control. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, Gary. We've covered a lot of information here over the last few minutes, and I'm sure there's plenty of questions from the audience. So let's open this up for Q&A. Uh, 